Hello everyone and welcome back to Mossy Bottom. Temperatures have begun to climb in the last week. We're reaching three or four degrees every day now and the ice is steadily melting. There's a hint, just a hint, that spring might be in the air. A false spring perhaps, I know they have lots of those here in Finland, but it's still a glorious taste of what's to come and for that I am grateful, as I always try to be for the good things in life. Today's video, as I promised and as you've probably guessed already, is all about the newest member of our family. Her name is Tuppence, which we chose because of her dark copper colour, uh, the same as an old two-penny coin, though we tend to just call her Tup for short. And no, she is neither Poodle nor Labradoodle, though she is a pure breed. But even if you're an avid dog fan, you may not have heard of her particular breed because they are classed as very rare and were even close to extinction in the last hundred years. Tuppence is in fact a barbet, which comes from the French word barb, meaning beard. Though here in Finland, and uh, possibly other countries too, they are called barbettes. Tup is only about 13 weeks old at this point, so her beard uh, has a lot of growing still to do before reaching its full uh, gimli potential. But if you take a look at some adult barbets, you'll see quite how beardy they really get. The name is definitely justified, even by doggy standards. And despite the fact that most people haven't heard of them, Le Chien Barbé, or the bearded dog, as they're called uh, in France, is actually a very old breed, with images of them dating back to the 16th century, where they were kept as retrievers and water dogs. It's thought that breeds like the Poodle, the Curly-Coated Retriever, and even the Newfoundland are more recent descendants of the Barbé. Amazingly, they were only recognised by the Kennel Club in the UK in 2018, perhaps because of their rarity, I'm not sure. And as with most things in life, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover because the Barbé is definitely not a cuddly lapdog. Well, at least not all the time. Because like most retrievers, they are very active, requiring a lot of exercise, and very intelligent too, doing well in agility or as rescue dogs, particularly in water. They are described on the Kennel Club's own website as hardy gun dogs, naturally athletic, with sturdy frames. And that's definitely true of Tuppence here because uh, she's a right little roly-poly monster, I assure you, <laughs> getting into trouble at every opportunity she can. There's another side to uh, the Barbe, though, as a breed, because they are also ranked as one of the best breeds with young children, described as amiable, gentle, and highly child-friendly, which was an incredibly important factor for us when choosing a dog this time around. Basically, the Barbe uh, is something between a Labrador Retriever and a Mangalitsa Pig, or perhaps a Sheep and a Springer Spaniel, depending on the day. But you get the idea. So how then did we end up with Tuppence, such a rare breed, here in the pine forests of Finland? Well, we weren't actually looking for a Barbe, no surprises there. In fact, I'd never even heard of the breed until just a few months ago. We were initially very keen on the Bernese Mountain Dog and the Newfoundland, both breeds known for their hardiness in cold climates and their child-friendly natures. But we realised, with a bit more research, that they perhaps weren't the best options for our one-bedroom house. And also, more importantly, uh, being so large, they're relatively short-lived, with quite pronounced health issues, especially later in life. At that point, we became very keen on retrievers and spaniels. Before Moss, my last dog, who was a border collie, uh, I had a golden retriever and Angela's family still has a spaniel. So uh, we liked that combination of medium to large size, gentle temperament, and active outdoors nature. We were also considering the Finnish Lapland after reading literally hundreds of comments on a previous video in which you folks all recommended them to us. Again, another breed I hadn't heard of, uh, but with research, we realized that the Lapland really suited our needs and it started to grow on us. 
We even got so far as contacting some breeders in the area here. At no stage during any of this were we even considering the barbe. And then an advert appeared for Toppence and her siblings, her littermates, from a registered breeder here in Finland. And my initial thoughts were, wow, what a beautiful dog, but surely not right for us. What popped into my head was poodles uh, in parlours with fancy hairdos. Angela, I think, had a similar response. We both assumed uh, from their appearance that they were uh, some sort of toy breed and not the rugged, outdoorsy, intelligent, trainable, child-friendly breed that we really wanted. Until, that is, we did some more research and discovered that the Barbe is in fact all of those things. At which point I couldn't quite believe I hadn't heard of them before or that they weren't more popular. Which begs the question, what are the downsides of the Barbe? Well, their coat is actually hypoallergenic, much like a poodle, meaning they don't shed. And I can confirm, after living with Tup for a month, that she definitely doesn't shed fur. Uh, even when you brush her, very little hair actually falls out. The downside, perhaps, is that the hair just keeps growing and growing and growing, and being so curly can form dreadlocks, so they need regular grooming. And I plan to give Tup a trim every year, probably right before the summer, to keep it short in the hotter months. And then let it grow again uh, long for the winter. Their double layered coats, being very thick, are of course highly insulative. Uh, so if you let it grow long as we plan to in the winter, it offers great natural protection from the cold. Saying that, we are of course very conscious of Tup being a puppy. This is Finland, it does get cold here. Uh, we have common sense and are experienced dog owners. If there is a need, we'll buy a coat and boots when she gets older. Right now, we just avoid going out when it's too cold. Incidentally, there you go, Tup, have a run around. I'm actually very much looking forward to clipping Tup's coat when the summer months come. As this channel is primarily focused on self-sufficiency, it may interest you to know that I haven't been to a hairdresser myself uh, in 19 years now. When I moved to France in my early 20s, I was so terrified of trying to explain in French how I wanted my hair cutting that I bought some barber's scissors uh, and cut it myself instead. And I've been doing that very occasionally, as you'll probably have noticed, ever since. I do quite like the idea of seasonality when it comes to haircuts, growing it longer in the winter and then cutting it shorter again for the warmer months. I'm sure that was quite a common practice when I was growing up, but alas, I think I'm the only one who still does it and you probably think I'm mad. If you're wondering though, 19 years of haircuts at four per year is a saving of about 1,500 euros. Self-sufficiency isn't just about growing your own food. There are many less obvious ways to save money if you really want to, and thus reduce the need for income. Having a dog probably isn't one of them. <laughs> Top! Barbets are far from small dogs. They grow to be about 60 to 65 centimeters at the shoulder. So actually a bit bigger even than Moss, my border collie. And perhaps uh, some people might consider that a downside if they wanted a smaller apartment sized dog. In terms of health, uh, they are prone to hip dysplasia like so many breeds. Though Top's parents uh, were A and B graded in terms of hips, so pretty good. They're also prone to ear infections uh, due to their prolific hair growth, even in the inner ear. Uh, but generally speaking, the Barbe is a healthy breed with a life expectancy of about 12 to 14 years on average. I think one of the biggest concerns with the Barbe is actually genetic diversity. As being a rare breed, there's a relatively small gene pool in terms of breeding them. Kennel clubs actually limit how many registered puppies a pedigree dog can have to try and counteract that, which I'm definitely in favour of. And perhaps one day, if the circumstances allow it, we might even breed Tup uh, and diversify that gene pool a little more. 
She is, by the way, from Finnish and German parents, so we expect her to be quick to learn and good at complying with rules. <laughs> Sorry folks, I couldn't resist. So why then didn't I get another Border Collie like Moss? Well, it may sound odd, uh, but Moss was my Border Collie, and I didn't want to feel like I was replacing him. Also, Moss joined my life at a time when I didn't have a partner or a child. So he and I had a lot of time together, basically all day, every day, especially when he was a puppy. We did bike mushing and agility and all sorts of other activities together. Border Collies need more than just daily walks and interaction with their family. They need a job to do, otherwise they can develop neuroses. As a mature dog, there goes the tripod. It's happening again, folks. <laughs> As a mature dog, Moss almost looked after himself. He was his own boss and very, very easy to look after. But Border Collie puppies are another matter entirely. And that just didn't seem like a smart choice at this point in my life. We still wanted an active, outdoorsy dog though, that was tough and rugged. So until that advert appeared, we were on the fence really between a Labrador Retriever and a Finnish Lapund. But then, Tuppence and her litter mates completely won our hearts. <laughs> we got to see their mum too, who was an absolute uh, sweetheart. Both Tup's parents are family pets. She's not from a hunting line. So hopefully, fingers crossed, she won't go running off into the forest to catch birds. On the subject of which, this forest is partly our land and partly our neighbours. It's private. But we still always walked up on a lead when we go through it because the island where we live is home to wolves. And I say wolves, there are officially two of them here. And this island is 2,801 square kilometers, which is pretty darn big. And our neighbors, some of whom are now in their 70s and have lived here all their lives, have never actually seen a wolf in person. So the chances are we probably won't either. But we are near the sea, just two kilometers away, which freezes in the winter, meaning that wolves may cross from the mainland where the population has slightly increased in recent years. And furthermore, I have seen what I believe to be wolf tracks in this very forest, just a kilometer away from here. The prints were about five inches long with clear claw marks and no human tracks close to them coming in and out of the trees. So not a lynx and unlikely to be a dog which leads me to believe at least one wolf does consider this forest part of its territory. Now, that would not concern me in the slightest by myself or even with my family. The last suspected human death by wolf here in Finland was in 1882 when rabies was still a factor. That's been all but eliminated now in Finland. The poor animals have been so persecuted over the centuries that the wolves which remain in Europe have an intense fear of people, without which they would not survive. And yes, hunters in Finland still apply for licenses to shoot wolves every year, despite the fact that the total population in Finland is only around 300 animals, compared to 5.5 million people. But the fact is, we now have a dog. And wolves are highly territorial, killing dogs every year in Finland, mostly in fenced yards at night or during hunting situations in which the wolves are directly threatened. The most common breeds which are killed are those which bark loudly to a wolf, which probably perceives a dog as another wolf invading its territory. That is clearly a direct challenge. Barbets, incidentally, are known for being a quiet breed, but still, she will never be left outside, just to be sure. And the lead means that wherever she is, myself or Angela are always within a few meters. To those of you who say, why walk in the forest at all? Well, if you're so afraid of something so unlikely that you can't take your own dog for a walk, then heck, you shouldn't have a dog in the first place. At least that's what I think. There's risk to some degree in everything. Isn't that right, Tup? 
So what about a rescue dog? I know some of you suggested that in the comments. Well, there are two reasons we didn't opt for a rescue dog. First, we wanted a puppy that would grow up with and be a companion for our daughter. And rescue centers, here in Finland at least, don't tend to have many puppies. Those that they do have are usually mixed breeds, in which it's difficult to predict the size and temperament uh, of the adult dog. The other reason is that as a family, we quite like the idea of having a litter or two of puppies ourselves one day for the sheer pleasure and joy of watching that journey firsthand in the early days and weeks of their lives. And if we're going to bring more dogs into the world, then I'd rather it be from a rare breed in which we can guarantee them good homes. I am, of course, in favor of rehoming dogs uh, from rescue centers when it's the right choice for the prospective owner, but that isn't always the case. And after a lot of discussion with Angela and contacting a local rescue center here in Finland, we realized that it just wasn't right for us. Finally, what role will Tuppence the Barbe play here at Frosty Mossy Bottom? Well, her main job is just to be a companion and playmate for Juno, our daughter, keeping her safe, especially when swimming. Barbets are also called water dogs and are phenomenal swimmers. And we are surrounded by the sea and lakes. In the summer, it's a wonderful place for swimming. We've also been told that they have excellent noses and the forests here are full of mushrooms in the summer and autumn. So perhaps I will attempt to train uh, tuppence here to sniff out tasty fungi which I can forage. And those of you who watched my channel in the early days will know I am a big fan of mushroom hunting. If any Finnish folks uh, out there happen to have a mushroom detecting dog, by the way, please do get in touch because I'd love to see that in action and get some tips on how to train Tup to do the same, if that's even possible. There might even be an entertaining video in it, thinking about it. <laughs> Top, sit. Sit. Good girl. Top, spin. Good girl. Top, bounce. Good girl. Top, stay. 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 Top, come. Good girl. Not bad. Not bad for 13 weeks, Top. Doing well. Alas, that is just about it for this one, folks. Time to brave the two wolves again and complete our walk through the forest here. And yes, because I know there'll be some comments, Tuppence is fully vaccinated. We're actually trying to socialize her as much as possible right now uh, during this crucial early period. So we're also walking her in the town as often as we can to meet other dogs and people. And if there are any folks nearby who have friendly, well-behaved dogs that might want to meet for a play date with this normally mad thing, she's a bit tired now, uh, then do send me a message. I'd love to hear from you. For now though, from me and from Tup, Take care of yourselves wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you again very soon. So will she. Till 18 years had passed Then I packed my bags 
and I said farewell for a better life at last. And for five years more I studied hard and the state paid harder still. For that better life I earned my debt on the education bill. Till I threw my cap and they all did clap and shake my hand and say, Well done my son, now work's begun, you'll pay that debt one day. Testing, testing, recording. There's Tup with a stick. Hello. Here I am. Let's see how it looks. Oh, you're so heavy already. How old are you? We have common sense and are experienced dog owners. Uh, if there is a need, we'll buy a coat and boots <laughs> when she's a bit older. <sighs> Thanks, Top. <laughs> 